4,000 years ago, if it was this day, we'd, and we were in Egypt, and we were part of the Israel, we'd be uh, waking up to a desert scene. Leave, we'd left Egypt, got gold in our pockets. We're not really sure what's happening, but we've, we're in. In a day or two, with maybe even within that day, we will be facing the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army will be facing us. And we're about to journey into discovery of who this God is that we have been rescued by. This one who has taken us out of the nation of Egypt as a nation to himself. And it will take us a bit of time to learn this glorious one. Because we've been slaves for 400 years. And we haven't understood the way of the king. We don't understand. We have heard the stories. We have covenant. But we haven't had the, the place that we're going to learn and grow and discover for 40 years. So for 40 years, we'll be led by the Spirit to learn to hear his voice, to be humbled in our heart. And to learn what's in our heart. And to, to learn that we don't live by the bread alone, but by every word that's coming out of the mouth of God. Now, 400 years prior to that day, because this is Psalm, Psalm, Palm Sunday, celebrating the entrance of the king into his city. For two days, maybe three, he ruled in uninterrupted worship. The temple was clean. The worship was alive. The preaching was powerful. People were being set free and healed and delivered. But he hadn't come to do that. He came to become the offering, the sacrifice, the Passover lamb. So then he began to present himself before the rulers and began to pro they, they became provoked in fear and jealousy and so they would now devise a plan to crucify him. They were hoped to do it after Passover, but God said, no, we will do this on my day. So right the day he was brought before the Lord um, but 400 years before the first Passover, Moses, or excuse me, Abraham had just rescued his nephew. His nephew had ran amok because living in Sodom and Gomorrah, they had rose into earthly pride. And in their earthly pride, they had tried to rebel against the four kingdoms that ruled the five kings. And instead of rebelling and getting free, they were swept and captured and carried away. Abram heard this. His name was Abram at the time and said, I've got to go get my nephew. It's kind of my charge. So he grabs his men and they go and they slaughter the four kingdoms that have, re that have taken the five kingdoms and all the people. And so verse 17 of, Ro of Genesis 14, we're going to begin. The king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley <coughs> of Shavah. That is the king's valley. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. Melchizedek is a Hebrew name. It's one of those transliterations. It did not change into English. It literally means king of righteousness. And then king of Salem. And he brought out bread and wine. You see the beginning introduction of covenant and of promise. He was the priest of God Most High. He was God the Son stepping into the earth to acquire his man, Abraham, into a place of covenant and faith. Things were going to break open. You see, because Sodom, the king of Sodom was on his way. And he had ideas too. And he blessed him, Melchizedek, and said, to Abram, blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And he, and blessed be God most high, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And he, Abram, gave him a tithe of all. There is revelation being communicated. Jesus in his own journey on the earth said that no man can come to me unless the father drags him. 
He, the words draw in the English, but it's in the Greek, it means drag them. How many of you have been dragged to Jesus? You, you, were, you, were, you had your own idea, but... And no man can know the Father unless the Son wills to reveal him. The Melchizedek, the high priest, this role and glorious place we find ourselves in Christ in the new covenant is one in which he brings revelation. Holy Spirit is the covenant. Abram's learning, listening, hearing, receiving, but now steps up the king of the world. The king of Sodom represents the world in all its ways. And the king of Sodom said to him, said to Abram, give me the persons and take all the goods for yourself. I'm just after the souls of men. I want to control that. Keep all the money you want. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. He had never heard those terms until the day he was revealed to him through Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. And now he has heard these words and agreed with what he's heard, and he is releasing a confession that we will know in the new covenant as a confession of hope. I've raised my hand to the Lord God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap. I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say I have made Abram rich. Now the word of sandal strap is literally sandal, and it's the idea, and it was in that day, all the way to, you might remember, Ruth and uh, Boaz, that when you made covenant, you gave the person as, a, as the promise of your covenant, your sandal. There was an opportunity, there was covenant being made, or opportunity for covenant to be received. Thank God Melchizedek got there first. Thank God Abram was already learned in the voice of God and following the Lord into promise. But now he's having an experience that he's never had to this, this point. Except, he said, you can let the young men, whatever they ate, they can have. The guys who went with me that were, you know, part of the people that live around where I live, let them have their part. So, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. I imagine this very quick soon after this first recorded account. And in the vision, the Lord, word of the Lord came saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Genesis 15.1. So when you say no to the world, it isn't always that you get applause and there's threats, there's fear there's what's that going to mean and I got a stepping into him and speaking don't be afraid I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward the new jubilee are a people who will receive the word of the Lord and make it our own we will proclaim it back to the Lord in worship and declaration and praise we will not be so worried about where it is on the outside as it is on the inside. And so Abram says, Lord God, what will you give me? See, and I, I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. So he's, the honest conversation, which Hebrews tells us in 10, we can approach him with a true heart. We can be honest with the situation because we're fully in faith in who Christ is. And therefore we can allow honesty in a conversation. What am I going to do? I don't even have a kid. Abraham said, look, you've given me no offspring. And behold, the Lord came to him. The new jubilee in the kingdom of God, in the righteousness of the Lord, in the spirit of the new covenant, will be ones we are encountering the Lord. We have in experiencing him we're following with him. We're entering into the voice. The Lord then says, he, he, um, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him. He's already in a vision. Now the word, it's, we're not stopping because we can't 
get where we're going within our own resource. We're just communicating where we are. But when God comes, says, that's maybe where you are, but I'd like to show you where I am. You need to hear me. So the Lord came to him saying, this one will not be your heir. But one who comes out of your own body shall be your heir. The more we press in, when we search for him with our whole heart, if we're a people that are in pursuit, we will find that every place that's a barrier, an obstacle, a place of death, destruction, if we'll just be honest with God, he'll say, that may be so, but that's not the way it ends. I've got an inheritance I'm bringing you into. So he brought him outside. Hallelujah. We got brought outside two different times this year. Because he wanted us to see something outside that we wouldn't see inside in the old mindset. He said, now look, look toward heaven. You don't look to the earth to find your help. The help is not in the earth. The help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He said, look toward heaven and count the stars and see if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. He's allowing vision. You see, we're going to the origin of everything in that, what we know to be Abraham, the father of faith. Where did this faith fully begin? What was happening? What had he learned to give place to? One thing, to follow the Lord, to the voice of the Lord, to hear what God's saying, to not disregard it because of the, the, the inability that he could do to produce it. But he had followed, and there he was. And he says, now, look. That's your descendants. And then verse 6, the first time the word faith or belief is used in the Bible. And he believed in the Lord. And he, the Lord, accounted it to him for righteousness. The word believe there is such a pregnant word. You could almost, and I, I think I like, he trusted he surrendered his outcome to, a pro to the promise maker. He believed in the Lord. You see, the new Jubilee isn't trying to get promises fulfilled. The new Jubilee is trying to get to the promise maker. And our confidence is in the Lord. He is our hope because of who he is, not because of what he said. We have confidence in a fulfilled promise because of the one who made the promise, not because of the promise that we're legally forcing him to have to do because we don't really trust him. No, we trust him. We trust him. We trust him for fulfillment of everything he said and everything he said we receive. Therein is righteousness. Therein and never will be righteousness apart from that simple relationship. So he said to him, the Lord sees faith. The Lord says, that's righteousness. Now the Lord's, now the Lord's talking. Because when he sees faith, he starts talking. He starts expressing. He starts expanding. So the Lord said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans, somewhere around the middle of Iraq today. To give you this land to inherit. Yes, you were up there in Turkey until your papa died. And then I brought you down here. I came to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how will I know, what, how, how will I know that I will inherit it? It's not unbelief. This is, I want to walk in covenant understanding. And so the Lord said to him, bring me three old, and three old heifer, cow, three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And then he brought all these to him, and Abraham cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite of the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. This is ancient, ancient covenant between tribes and people and men. This is something that Abram's understanding that God is about to enter into a covenant with me. So he follows the prescribed fashion. This was done, it's, it's historic. It was done in Jerusalem amongst the elders right before the destruction of, of Jerusalem. 
It says, and so he's done what he's done. He had a vision experience through the night. Now he's up in the morning. He's put the covenant in place. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Because God is so valuable, he will not show up for us so we don't lose our place. He'll show up for him when he has his place. He's not here to entertain us. He's here to take over. And so many times we find ourselves in that in-between time. I got, the, I, I got everything in place. Where's God? All I see are vultures. All I see are birds of, not even birds of prey. They're just just eat stuff that's dead. They want my, they're after the carcass. So he drove them away. He pushed them away. There's something about pushing away the things that are saying to you, you can't have that. You'll never get that. This is not for, just get it away. Push it away. Now the sun was going down. He spent a day pushing vultures away. Some of us have thoughts that bother us. We have to learn to push them away. You can't control your thoughts, but you can control them making a nest in you. And once you find one that's not in agreement with Jesus Christ, you say, thought, you stop that. You submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. I return my mind, my emotions, my envision to the one. Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. What is that? It's the fear of God. There's a pure fear of God. The same fear that John felt when he saw Jesus in his glorified state on the Isle of Patmos. He's like, whoa. And then in this posture, then he said, Father, God, now know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that's not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. One man the father of faith, encountering God, making covenant. His prof God is prophesying to him 400 years ahead of everything. Also the nations whom they serve, I will judge afterward and they shall come out with great possessions. Speaking every suffering, every trial, everything you walk through because of Jesus Christ, you will come out with great possessions. Because God has intended it to be so. The things of the kingdom that are most valuable. Sometimes it will be gold and silver. But most times it will be the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. To which now you walk in and keep and possess. Now as for you, you're going to go to your fathers in peace. And you shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation... They shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. God making covenant with a man, making a promise of a child, making a declaration of great descendants, making it, he's saying, you're going to be such a big nation, I'm going to have to give you a lot of real estate. But first, you're going to be in a confined position for 400 years, but when I bring you out, I'll bring you out with the, all of the riches and gold. But then... It's got to be on a timetable. And there's issues that the Amorites have to still, who were the predominant people of the land, have to walk out. And so it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark. And behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between these pieces. Smoking oven is God the Father. The burning torch is God the Son walking through the midst of this. And on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. That's from the Nile to the Euphrates. The, I have given the Kenanites, the Kenzanites, the Catamanites, the Hittites, the Parasites, Rephraim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. God speaking. God speaking. Don't you, let's not be afraid of what's happening in the nations and the earth. They are the Lord's. And he's claiming them for himself. And we are in a massive moment. For the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. 
The Lord will send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Oh, praise you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 8. Jesus, we will receive communion in a few moments. And we, we know what he said. This is the covenant in my blood. But what is this new covenant? God made a covenant with Abram. And this covenant, then he began to enlarge it to the point to which he completed it by bringing his son, Jesus, into mankind to become the son of man, to become the sacrifice for sin, so that all judgment could be executed, all condemnation ended, all curses exhausted, and all sin removed. Amen. Once and for all, forever. But now... How do we live from this? How do we live in this relationship? Because it's what God was looking for, a kingdom of priests. Hebrews chapter 8 is a quotation out of Jeremiah 31. It's also repeated in Hebrews uh, 8. And Jesus himself quotes from this in John 6. This, verse, uh, verse 7, for... If that first covenant had been faultless, the one that made with Moses, that brought us the law, then no peace, no, no, no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, the first covenant, I'd find sin. So that sin could be exceedingly sinful. So that the son could become the answer by taking away our sin. So that covenant could not make us perfect. It actually found fault with us. But he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. Can you see him smiling? The days are coming. I'll make a new covenant. I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, and we're in that covenant. Because it's through the Son. It's through the glorified, resurrected man. I'll make a new covenant. So here it is. Not according to the covenant I made with the fathers in the day I took them out and led them out of, of the land of Egypt. Because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. There is not one of us in this room, not one of us online, not one person in the world that upon hearing what God says to do is able. Because without the grace of dependency coming from the Son and by His ability, we will all sin. Again, 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 because it's basically I'm trying to resource myself rather than resourcing the one who has saved me. And so he says, here's a new one. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after these days, says the Lord. I'll put my laws in their minds, write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. We, the new Jubilee, are going to live in the new covenant. We are going to learn the new covenant and discover what this glorious covenant has been given to us. Not follow traditions we're going to submit to the truth and the word so that we can discover all that Christ is and not ask Christ to be what he's already become and do what he's already done. Instead, we'll step into the things he's actually doing. He's actually working. He's got a day job. Night job, too. He ever lives to make intercession for us. So, this covenant is enlarged in 2 Corinthians 3 when he says the old covenant from Moses the letter of the law that kills that brings condemnation but the new covenant the spirit that gives life to righteousness the covenant of the spirit is that everyone whose faith is in the son is now tutored by the Spirit of God and the Word of God to be led by the Spirit of God to learn, to discover, to encounter, to have those Abrahamic encounters. Every one of us. Every one of us. 
Everyone, by virtue of the Son, are now a part of a family. Every member, multiple members, one head. Everyone, everyone is having the Word of God put in their mind and written on their heart. Yes, it takes time. It's not cheap. You can't get it in 30 seconds on YouTube. You, you, it takes application of time, believing heart, confessing mouth, Holy Spirit, truth, to see, behold, and discover the glorious Jesus Christ, who in turn reveals the Father to us. And, it, you know, best I can figure, it's an hour. And that's what we figure. Jesus said, can you not watch with me one hour? But when we give ourselves to that practice, what we come out is things are put in our head. Our laws are written in our heart. We are, we're not worrying over this, that, or the other. We're walking with a man. We're walking in uh, agreements. We're walking in uh, uh, worship. None of them shall teach his neighbor. We're, yeah, we're, we're still on that one. None of them, next verse, you, you, shall teach his neighbor. And none of his brothers saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them. This is something that's going to be so cool. Because when we take the time, individuals, members, one of another, to connect each of us into the head, to spend the time, to hear his voice, to pursue the one, we start hearing him speak. We start walking with him. We start knowing our belonging, that we are sons, and not slaves. And... We also know that what God's saying to me is unique to me. And I'm not to put it on you and don't put your stuff on me. We just need to walk with God. The, the responsibility of the new covenant was that we didn't get a law to tell us what to do. We got a Holy Spirit to lead us where we're going. And all of us get to go. All of us get to go. We don't have to have a bunch of people telling us how to all believe because we have one telling us who to believe and activating, activating so that all of them will know me. He said, all will know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, from the youngest to the oldest, from the, from the weakest to the strongest. And, and, the, and the possibility of discovery is unlimited because we can move into the faith of Abraham. 400 year prophecies being given. Who knows? Now here's the best part. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sin and lawless deeds I will remember no more. That is only possible because he accepted the offering of his son. And his son's offering was once and for all to deal with sin for all time. Judgment, we'll look at this. Judgment was executed upon the son. Condemnation ended upon the son. The curse was exhausted on this son on the tree. And sin, all sin, was removed forever. That is now how the Father can look at you and me at whatever day I walk through and say, I see you in my son. I see you in my son, so I am not, all I can do is show mercy to you and I don't even remember what you did yesterday. Imagine a life free of shame, a life free of pain, a life free of blaming and hiding, a life that's no longer having to say, oh, I've got a standard I'm trying to live up to and, and please don't judge me today because today's a worse day than yesterday and if you give me another day, I think I can do a better job at it. Well, none of us are doing that. We're simply saying, I am in the Son, Christ. I am known in Christ. I am loved in Christ. I'm accepted in the Beloved. I have no acceptance without the Beloved. I don't want to even meet God without Jesus all over me. He's me. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not me. It's He. See, we, the new Jubilee, are moving from the me to the He. Rather than it's about me, it's about he. 
All the promises are yes and amen in Christ. To the glory of God through us. Divine channels, opportunities of expression, rivers that will flow out of our belly, all for the glory of God, all for the fulfillment of the Son, all to move toward Him. 1 Corinthians 5. So we can consecrate ourselves to the Lord to give Him this offering of ourselves. Notice, the new covenant was not made between man. It was made between God and a man. Every time we make covenant to be a certain kind of people, promise will always love. The closest we have a covenant that we have to really work at is the one we make in our spouse when we get married. But, but as far as you don't build community by making covenant with each other, you build community by everyone being in covenant with the Son. Accepting their responsibility as a member of the living body to get up and pray, to study the living word, to believe what it says of the Son, to fellowship in this relationship that cost God everything. So he could have knowing us each. Do you... He does not do this work so that he can have a few people tell everybody what they need to do and everybody can feel like, oh, whatever you told me was going to work and therefore I don't have to do anything. Now I can blame you for nothing happening. <laughs> That's stupid. He said, no, I'm going to have my entire living body alive. Every one of them is going to be growing up in the head. I'll be putting laws in their mind, writing them in their heart. I'll be opening them in vision. I'll be in a covenant of spirit. I'll be leading them by the, the spirit. They will be my sons. And they won't be pushing on each other because they'll be focused on the one, the one, the one, the one, the one. And all from the one, they'll be giving away, they'll be loving, they'll be sharing, they'll be kind. And then, here he is. We get up every morning, it's a new day, new creation. No sin in this room. You may have transgressed a whole bunch, you may have been really naughty yesterday. But God says, I'll be merciful to you. What's the, what's the response of God today to any one of us? Mercy. 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 We're not a, we're, we're not, oh. And, and, and what's his, what's the issue if we're living in regret and way past carrying burdens from yesteryear? What's he said? What are you talking about? I don't remember any of that. First Corinthians 5. Now I'm going to shock you to show you both how powerful this is and how much the responsibility that we carry with him as we walk the earth. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. Such sexual immorality that it's not even named among the Gentiles. That is, a man has his father's wife. And you are puffed up. Puffed up. Meaning, whatever. <laughs> and have not rather mourned. Mourning is, oh God, the freedom that you want for all of us. We don't want to mistreat it, misabuse it. Oh God. So that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Spirit-led church. Spirit rule, reckon, you know, or setting things in order the way they are to be. We're not going around. We, it's a hard attitude of prayer. For indeed is absent in the body, but present in the spirit. That's why we're online. We're in with you in your living room. We're all together in the spirit. We can be together. We've learned to be in the spirit. And so he said, therefore, absent in body, but present in the spirit, I've already judged as though I were present him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa! The Lord Jesus Christ present with us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 He's walking among us. 
We are to clean ourselves up before him, by him, through him, with him, because of him, because he's coming in. So I deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that this spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. I did not read that to teach you about that. I just read that to shock you. Because the Holy Spirit said, read the front. Otherwise, you won't appreciate the solution. Your glorying is not good. Your attitude, you're in, you know. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore, and here is the statement that the real issue is. It's about the care of the one and the love God has for his entire body. Therefore, purge out the old leaven. That's Old Testament, Old Covenant, law mentality. Purge it out. That you may become a new lump, a new jubilee, a people in agreement with truth. It's been in here for thousands of years. We just lost it in traditions of man. The possibility of this Jesus among us. That you be a new lump since you are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. None of us are here because our sin is a lower level than those awful sins like somebody having his father's wife. No. Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed. Our confidence is in him. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ for what he has accomplished, what the Father did to him, what God has raised him up into, his priestly ministry, we we walk away from untold multitudes of disobedience. We're never, uh, never aware of it because we're simply focused on the one we're in pursuit of. It's the genius of God. If some thought comes and says, you can't because the, you just thought that, you felt this, you were over there, you did that, that happened to you before, you just go, what? <laughs> Jesus, I just worship you. And God says, yeah, that's exactly so. You are not, you're a mercy to your unrighteousness and all the sin and lawless deeds have been forgotten. That why every day is a new day. Every day is a new possibility. Every day is in Christ. Every day we can go up to the highest of our calling. We can step inside our inheritance. We can enjoy this glorious promise. Think of it. No one's stopping us but ourselves. No one is to blame but ourselves. No one can keep us from this glorious one but us. We learn, we grow, we press in, we touch, and we learn what does he want of me in this glorious pursuit? Therefore, let us keep the feast. We are in the feast today, Passover. Then comes the resurrection, the first fruits. Then the, during that, it's the feast of unleavened bread, all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, leaven of the old, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Malice and wickedness is just awful. Ill intent. It's ill will. It's wanting someone else to be hurt. Wanting someone else to suffer, someone else to be taken. It is a legal term that if you've done something with malice, it is much more than if it was by an accident. It means you wanted something bad to happen to that person. And any one of us who has malice to any person in the earth are in this leaven. (sighs) Wickedness is just acting it out even in bigger and more inventive ways we're not to take the covenant in the old we're not to keep the feast with the leaven of malice and wickedness oh that could get me all 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 worried about how am i supposed to be oh no what am i doing did i think of a wrong thought oh no i I, i'm now no it's not the old and yes we're not going into that where are we going but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth Simple. So genius of God. To say, I'll pay for all you do wrong. But then I will require you of what I want in the one you now believe in. Inside of him. I want you to be sincere. 
That means to be clear. Not having duplistic ideas, not hypo hypocritical, being honest, speaking truth in love. Now, it, it, it's, it's so much more demanding, to be honest, because we're having to go, oh gosh, sincerity and truth. Truth is not being veiled. It's, un it's not being covered. It's honest. Honest heart. It's, it's like It's like, well, yes, Lord. Second Corinthians 1, 12. The Lord brought me back to this. 24 years ago, we came in this building for the first time. And upon appearing, the Lord had sovereignly given me a promise or a declaration or a decree to submit to. 2 Corinthians 1.12 Took a whole year teaching the book of Corinthians because I understood that even in the book of Corinthians in Los Angeles there were so many parallels. A port city full of influence, full of sin, full of insanity, full of ex uh, opportunity, full of gifting. But this one scripture, for our boasting, Paul said, is the testimony of our conscience. You see, the reason I go spend all that time with Jesus is to get my, my heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. I want to convince myself of the truth by being in the presence of the one who is true. I, and a testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity. No more gimmicks. No more gadgets. No more promises we can't keep. Just simple, honest people in love and pursuit, following after the one who provides for it all. He. Godly sincerity, simplicity. Not duplicity. Not different standards. Church standard, business standard, work standard, neighbor standard. No, one standard, Jesus Christ. Just, oh, I want to behold you. Oh, I want to be in love with you. Oh, I need to follow you. Thank you for providing everything. There's nothing I can gain from what I do. It's all from you. I love you. I worship you. No, I'm not worrying about what others are doing. I'm not in competition with you. I, we're in completion with each other. We're in love with each other, not fear of each other. We are in love. We're, 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 we're going to pull together as I grow up in and release out. Not with fleshly wisdom. Oh, the days of doing things because it works in the world are going to stop. Not because we're going to call them out. Because they're just not what we're called to do. Why would we walk in fleshly wisdom when we can walk in the Spirit? It's harder to walk in the Spirit. But once you get, begin to get the rhythm, you begin to go, Wow, this just got righteousness, peace, and joy all over it. By the grace of God and more abundantly towards you. I felt so, there's so much I will we'll illuminate in the days ahead. But today, I, the Lord just had wanted to make a strong point about his son's provision, his priestly ministry, about our inability to produce, and yet, that we are still before him, responsible to live with him. And it's done in the simplest of ways, with simplicity and godly sincerity and truth in pursuit. When he made covenant, it was so that he could separate a people unto himself, for himself, a holy nation, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We would show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness. I think the darkest thing in the earth is religion. And anything that uses power or influence to gain your will and your want. The most powerful thing in the kingdom is submission and surrender. Just as Cammie 
who's told by the Lord, if you give it to me, it's mine. And I can do anything. If you keep it, I'll comfort you the best I can. But I'm limited on what I can do because it's yours. Surrender, submission, belief, trust, yielding, giving room. It takes time. Trust me, you cannot just hear me today and carry it to next Sunday. You're going to have to find this word tomorrow and say, Lord, I want to bring all of me into all of you. And so I want you to have all of me right now. I'll take the time. Help me learn the way, the word, the truth. But today, today we're giving ourselves back to Jesus in this new glorious covenant. And he is merciful to our unrighteousness. Our sin and lawless deeds he remembers no more. And he's saying, come on, follow me. So if you'll take, after this, we're going to bring an offering to the Lord. Because Melchizedek, the high priest, our Lord Jesus today, made covenant. And then Abram gave tithes and he received blessing. We carry promise. He carried promise, but he needed his priest to bless him. He needed the priest of God Most High to pronounce the blessing on him of victory, of triumph. And I believe today our high priest Jesus is going to pronounce the blessing on us, Jubilee. I so thank you, Lord. Lord, we know that right now what we are doing are heart issues. I know. We bow our knee, our heart. We seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways. That you who have heard from heaven and sent your son would unlock through his intercession our provision of healing and salvation and deliverance and abundance. Lord, we know that your body was broken, put on a cross, hung on a tree, curses inflicted, judgment impeded, awful wrath of God all upon you so that we could be made the righteousness of God in you, Christ Jesus. This is the new covenant we're in. We eat of your body today to be made whole of our brokenness and to agree again with truth and to walk in truth, in sincerity. Not concerned with each other, but concerned about ourselves in humility, crying out, God, I want to fully enter in and become all and see all and receive all that you are. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. He said, this is the bread of my, of the, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, you declare my death. This is the, this is my body. Take it and eat it. Let's do that. Then he took the cup and said, this is the cup. This is the new covenant in my blood. This is the transaction. This is what has changed the world forever. No man can relate to God any other way than through this blood. And once we relate to him through this blood, we are known by God in Christ. And once we're in Christ, he treats us the same way he treats Christ. He loves us like he loves Christ. He heals us like he healed Christ. He delivers us like he delivered his son. He raises us with him like he raised his son. He sits us with his son because we are seated in Christ with Christ. And so together we are partaking of the new covenant. Putting the laws in our mind, writing in our heart, no longer being compelled by someone else to tell us what it means to know God, but each of us finding out for ourselves in Christ, in the Spirit, with the truth, who He is and who we are, and living in peace and joy and harmony, and loving everyone. No malice, no wickedness, for whatever cause, for whatever reason, 
not named among us, but sincerity and truth. We take and eat, keep the feast. Let's go ahead and drink together. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Now while we worship for a moment, I want you to receive the sprinkling of the heart with the blood from an evil conscience. And I want you to feel the water washing over your body to make it fully free. I don't care what you came in here with. I don't care what you've been doing. Today's the day of salvation. Today is the day of freedom. Today is the day we walk away from what is destructive and into the one who is life and life alone. So let's worship and enter into the sun. We praise you. You call us out of darkness into your glorious light. Freeing us from wherever we've been captured. Healing us wherever we are sick. We worship you. buckets up in the front. You can grab an envelope if you're looking for a place to put the cash and get a receipt online. You can use your phone here in the house. There's something about the new Jubilee giving him first place as our high priest, knowing he receives our tithes there and commands a blessing. So go ahead and minister to the Lord this great offering, this special. I believe there's something in it that God wants from each of us. So you may not even know what it is. You may need to go home and transfer funds in order to do it. It doesn't matter. Just obey God. We are not here in a posture of, I don't know, just being taken care of. We're in a process of covenant. 
that God has made with us and he is releasing revelation after Melchizedek came to Abram and the blessing was released and the tithe exchanged and the say no to the world declared then God came to Abram and said I'm your reward I'm in this thing I'm bringing you a son I'm bringing you breakthrough whoa worship you just minister give you a couple of minutes to minister to the Lord just minister Exchanging, giving, giving, giving. We have come to behold His glory. We have come to receive His love. We have come to the heavenly Like you to, I'd love for you to stand so we can receive the blessing. To receive blessing, healing, deliverance, salvation, forgiveness, redemption, reconciliation, reward, breakthrough. The Spirit of God is here. What we're talking about is so beyond what we can thought. And we're just touching the beginning doorway into this glorious place in Christ. Father God, we bring to you our offering. We give it to your son, our high priest. He's received it. As he took our sin from us and gave us his righteousness, he takes our tithe and gives us covenant and blessing and doors that open and faith to go into the future. We stand here as a new Jubilee, yet to understand fully, but receiving fully everything you've said. Your word is truth. You, are, you will unveil, you will reveal, you will help us grow. We know we will. Oh, whoa. And the Lord would say, I've come now to release unto my sons and daughters the blessing of Abraham in Christ. I have taken the curse upon myself and now I have granted through myself the blessing of Abraham. And I was the seed of promise. I now speak to my sons and daughters whom I rejoice with and sanctify through. I am bringing to you blessing. I bless your promises to fruition. I bless you out of destruction into breakthrough and victory and resurrection life. I grant you miracles and the supply of the Spirit of God. I bring my healing to you, my deliverance to you, my salvation to you. I take all of you that you'll give me 
and I take possession of all of you that you give me and I will now remedy much of what has been distracting you because I am now destroying those things that have kept you captive. Yes, it's a day of deliverance. Yes, it's a day of deliverance. Yes, it's a day of deliverance. It's a Passover. I passed over. I call you out. I call you up. I call you out. Old leaven gone. Malice gone. Wickedness gone. Follow after me. You're free. You're free. You're free. Whoa. you're about ready to lead us into nation's prayer you're welcome to come and be a part of that gather around the flags and join in the intercession i believe right now that he who supplies the spirit works miracles among us is here take a moment before we go because it is each of us reaching into the head to receive from christ what is ours and given to us take a moment and receive your miracle Receive a miracle. Receive your strength, your dunamis. Receive your healing. Receive the Holy Spirit, baptizing fresh with a new language. Receive visions of the future. Receive covenant. Receive promise. Receive all sins are forgiven, all mercy to all unrighteousness see him beginning to shower the places of unrighteousness with mercy's triumph over judgment mercy's triumphing mercy's coming mercy's coming mercy's coming receive mercy mercy receive the nut the covenant mercy receive mercy receive mercy 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 receive mercy and receive we go out with the forgetfulness of God no remembrance of our sin our lawless deeds not only forgiven but forgotten you leave we leave free fully free fully unlocked not just from the act but the memory God the Father and it relates to us in the Son. Take a moment and settle yourself again. I am in Christ. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. My life is in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. I worship Christ. I release me. <laughs> I turn from me to He, the glorious one, the victorious one, triumphant in every way. Lord, I believe that you would grant one last blessing and we need it as we go out to be with you tomorrow. You would supernaturally grant everyone the kind of anointing that you gave the apostles to seek your face, the kind of hunger that you gave your church to pursue you, the love, the impact, the Spirit of God coming powerfully into our time of prayer tomorrow, and joy filling us, and peace filling us, and guarding us, and righteousness enveloping us. We bless you for it all. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. This Feast of the Unleavened Bread, this whole seven days to next Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday. Oh God, do a great work 
a great work in all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.